Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, your one-stop website for all of the day's latest church apostasy news, end-time news, keeping you up to date on all the latest happenings from around the world as we head closer to the fruition of the third secret of Fatima, the formal schism, the arrival of the false prophet, and Antichrist. You can find these talks all over the alternative media circuit. You can find this talk on tradcatnight.org under the mp3 section you can also find this radio show slash podcast on soundcloud now so subscribe to tradcat night on soundcloud very easy to make a uh, profile there and do so and follow along you can also follow tradcat night blogs now via email i've added the link in the upper right hand corner of the website so you can do so just know that I do post well over a dozen blogs on a daily basis, so you'll be getting a lot of email from Tradcat Knight. Make sure you, you follow along on Twitter. Search Tradcat Knight. Subscribe to Tradcat Knight right now here on the YouTube channel. Click the notification button. And lastly, folks, make sure you join the new Facebook group, which has nearly 17,000 members now. Highly interactive. It's called Traditional Catholic on Facebook, lots of quotes, pictures, blogs, videos, all kinds of things going on in that group. And I ask you kindly to continue to spread word of Trad Cat Night and continue to comment, folks. Again, many of you keep coming back to me and saying, Eric, we need more of a community. We need to kind of get together. Well, I'm providing that opportunity now with allowing comments on all social media, but many of you are not taking advantage of it on the website after every article there's a section where it says post a comment simply post your comment now if you have to use the anonymous tag as most of you have to due to most of you not having the Google Plus um, membership or whatever but you can still post your name in your comment even though it comes under anonymous so type in your comment and put Gen D or Mike S whatever your name is so I know who it is. So this is a one way to interact with other people, and that's how I want to do it going forward. And so we've had somewhat decent success over the past few weeks, but still many of you are not locating where you can comment and are highly confused. Again, it's at the end of each blog, folks. So please take uh, advantage of that. We've got a lot of good things to discuss on today's radio show, in which we will entitle it, the seven ways in which the New World Order deceives. So we'll talk a little bit more about the New World Order. We want to talk a little bit about Leo the Thirteenth and what he said in one of his encyclicals in, uh, concerning, you know, now is the hour to fight and not to take the flight. We'll also talk about Father Fahey and the social kingship of Christ. I want to cover the latest false prophet message. We, of course, will cover... Some of the latest coming from my timeline as it relates to the church and end time news. Latest poem. So much to talk about. And what I'm going to do probably going forward is on next week's radio show, I will probably go through some of the blogs and cover uh, some of your comments specifically right from uh, the blog itself. So I'll announce your name, your comment, and kind of show some of the interaction uh, going on on Trad Cat Night these days. Now I ask you all to continue to keep my ministry in prayer, been um, active with it the last 48 hours, and found a few more girls interested in listening, had several long conversations, um, potential converts down the road, and in addition to that, I've recently started reaching out and sending invites on Twitter to those who are more, uh, how should we say this, notable in the public's eyes, who are verified, People of interest, you can say. And over the past week, we've we got quite a few. Andrea Vexco, TV host on ABC Saturday mornings, joined following along now Tradcat Night. Bianca De La Garza, she's an award-winning nominated host and journalist. Jeanette Kaplun, another award-nominated TV host who's been seen on Good Morning America and Univision. Oren Woodward, top 100 speaker, according to Inc. Magazine best-selling author. Robbie Ludwig, author, national TV host, contributor, 
and award-winning singer and songwriter, actress Leia West. So I want to, we want to continue to spread that message of Fatima out there to the public, many who still don't know the times that uh, we do indeed live in. And uh, again, I'm still getting some resistance from those who identify as Catholics. You know, you're just a fear monger, Eric, and fear is not of God. And no, that's, that's not true, actually. Scripture says fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. So if you're coming onto my page and it's invoking uh, a fear response in general, again, as I've said before, fear is a result of self-love in this particular context. It's not an ailment on my part by putting out the information. It's an ailment on your side that you're fearing death or fearing whatever. It's a result of self-love on your end. So one of the primary things that we're trying to do at Trad Cat Night is to show all who would identify as Christian that these are the times that Jesus lived in. And quite frankly, people just don't want to accept that. Well, that's not going to change. I can't help the blind to see unless grace is given. So I will continue to pray for those uh, to wake up. But again, the book of Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiasticus talks about this. The fear of God is the beginning of all uh, wisdom. So Again, I can just visualize some of these individuals back in Noah's time. And, you know, Noah, stop stop saying that. We're tired of hearing that. Quit building that ark. Nothing's coming. You're a fear monger. And these, these are people today who identify themselves as Christians. Some of them traditionalists. And again, we know they're of the false variety from my perspective. But we got to keep pressing on, folks. Before we get started, let us say a prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary so that individuals may wake up and so that we can continue to convert people out of the Novus Ordo Church, out of the infiltrated, how should we say this, out of the infilt uh, infiltrated sector of the church, if you will, those following uh, Vatican II. This is a reminder, Vatican II is merely pastoral. And furthermore, you cannot give assent of your mind and your will to anything that would run contrary to Catholic teaching. So Vatican II as a whole is a robber council that has Freemasonic principles laced throughout some of the documents on the basis of that it is an evil quote-unquote council, truly isn't a council of the Catholic Church and will later be made null and void after the tribulation in my opinion. So let us pray to Our Lady to ask for those graces for our own souls, for our own hearts, for her to spread her mantle over our minds, ask her to continue to protect our families, for conversions to the church, we pray for the Pope, Benedict XVI, we pray for priests, pray for souls in purgatory, for all prelates, pray for poor sinners, you and I, so we have the courage to go before and pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And to get things started today, I ask you all to continue to keep me in prayer. I might have another procedure tomorrow. That's why I'm doing this radio show a little bit earlier today. But I first want to tackle an email that came in uh, just, well, it was a few days ago. From Michael Grager, and first of all, I appreciate uh, the email, uh, Michael. Uh, he says, Dear Eric, just listening to the podcast that you recently had posted from an old episode in which you asked your listeners to contact you if you had any questions, concerns, or reservations about your position uh, in regards to withdrawing physically uh, from the church. The problem I have on a personal level is that it's impractical, and I'm going to stop after every sentence and make comments rather than say the whole thing and then and then give comments well folks we live in extraordinary times things are not practical do you think those who are living in communist china right now have it practically speaking no they do not so we have to we have to do what the church gives us if the church doesn't give us a true and proper community then there's nothing we can do about it uh, now he goes on to say, I can't survive without the sacraments. Well, subjectively, you believe that you can't, but objectively, yes, you can. Again, there are many right now who are living and surviving uh, without going to the physical 
buildings, if you will, that have Catholic on the front of it, which truly are not Catholic. Again, reference any communist uh, country, and you can see that many of them are not getting to uh, the sacraments every week or every month for that matter. The rosary in and of itself is not enough for me. I'm your typical cradle Catholic who was poorly catechized at, at school and at home and finally realized after many years of failure that the Catholic Church was the one true church less than two years ago. I was in my mid-30s when finally coming to this realization. It's been nonstop learning ever since. Um, the Sacrament of Confession and Novus, Novus Ordo Church works for me. We'll stop right there. We have to remember, and I advise everyone to get to my YouTube channel, look up Father Hess. Go to the Father Hess section, watch his videos, but then we recall what he says concerning approaching doubtful sacraments. We can't do this per canon law. So if we're principally based people and we want to follow principles that the church has laid out, then we say, no, we can't do it. There's a line in the sand. Now, we can do so uh, in, in terms of the sacraments uh, from the Novus Ordo, do so in emergency purposes, as Father Hess points out. And again, that video is Father Hess can one confess to a heretical uh, priest, I think it's called, is the video. You can look that up and listen to it. It's helped me to overcome impurity, and it's helped me to overcome uh, many ailments slowly but surely. I understand that there's material heresies that have been rampant since Vatican II in particular, where Christ did not abandon his church or faithful. The time is not yet for formal heresy. Well, that doesn't mean that you can still stay in the buildings, Michael. Where there is heresy, there's still poison. That's why Archbishop Lefebvre said you had to stay out of those buildings. And again, it seems to me like he doesn't follow Archbishop Lefebvre. And that's what we follow here at Tradcat Night. We, we believe he's the St. Athanasius of our times. I would throw Father Hess in that category. So it wouldn't matter whether it's material or formal. You just need to know it equates to poison. And where poison is, you cannot be. It displeases Jesus. Does it please Jesus that people go into the Novus Ordo buildings when they fully acknowledge that there is heresy, whether it's material or formally, no, no, it would be sinful. That's why right now, if I were to go into a Nova Sordo uh, building um, for such purposes, I know I would be committing mortal sin. I know I would be displeasing him. So the question again is not about validity, and this is where some of the semi-trads and uh, don't get it. It's about whether something is licit or not. Licit or not. He goes on to say, what about the many and poor literate Catholics around the world who are dependent on these Novus Ordo churches. If they're honoring the laws of God on their heart and the laws of the church, um, how are they in disobedience? Well, they would be disobedient by communing with material heretics. It's that simple. They are being disobedient because the priests of those buildings are being disobedient to Jesus and tradition. It's quite simple. We've covered that before. I do think there is such a thing as being too clever for one owns good, and I suspect that is the case for you. The holiness of a priest, or lack thereof, doesn't deny the validity or charisma of his priesthood. Again, unfortunately, Michael doesn't understand the difference between validity and something being licit, which is why you need to follow someone like Father Hess, who has two doctoral degrees, one in Thomistic theology, one in canon law itself. So he's true on the level of the sinful nature, but when we're talking about matters of the faith, it does matter. If one is teaching heresy, then you cannot be there. It's that simple. Again, just as we've pointed out, um, we can make that reference, or, or a good analogy would be that the church doesn't allow us to go into the Russian or Greek Orthodox uh, churches we cannot go into these Novus Ordo churches. Again, just on the basis of that the new rites are doubtful altogether and canon law tells us that we have to avoid that. If we're principal, principally based people, then this is what we have to follow. So Michael is wrong there. The faith is simple and God is created in such a way, irrespective of social class, education, can faithfully follow him through the church. Demanding Catholics can quote every council and canon law paragraph to come to your conclu conclusion uh, that now is the time to abandon our churches makes no sense to me. Well, it makes sense to me if you know the faith. If you don't know the faith, then, then you're in trouble. You have to know your faith in order even to get to heaven, objectively speaking.
I don't defend false ecumenism, he says. I don't defend modern psychology as a crept in and corrupted pastoral approach of the church. I don't defend, defend evolution theory. I don't defend the changes in the liturgy. I hate how dogma, how the dogma, there is no salvation outside the church is written off today. I hate that so many Catholics, uh, Catholic leaders celebrate Luther's rebellion recently. I hate it all, but I humbly... But I'm humble enough to know I'm lost without the church. And that's where Michael's not, he's not drawing that distinction. The conciliar church, objectively speaking, isn't the Catholic church. It isn't. This is what Archbishop Lefebvre said. The conciliar church is heretical and schismatic on the material level. So by, let's say, if Michael's local pastor was into all that, if he was a false communist, which is heresy, if he was uh, preaching Luther or this or that, and you're going in and you want to commune with those people, Yes, you are offending God. So again, this is the type of arguments that are presented by semi-traditionalists. Again, I'm not picking on Michael, but it's just to rationalize that I have to go to Mass. I have to go to church. It's always going to be there. No, it's not, folks. If you read some of the uh, prophecies, mystics such as Marie Julie Jehani, God is so angry that he says he's going to take the sacraments away. He says that you will literally have to tell, tell me your sins directly. He says that to Marie Julie Jehani. We're not quite year, there yet, I would argue. The church is not formally underground yet, but it, it mostly is. It largely is now, due to all of the heresies. The Novus Ordo Church has less Catholicity in it than the Greek or Russian churches right now. And it's only going to get worse. So, unfortunately, Michael, again, I don't want to pick on you, but you're, you're, you're rationalizing now. I'm nothing without grace. Well, you get grace from the church itself, and you get grace from the Blessed Virgin Mary itself. You certainly aren't getting it from the Novus Ordo right itself. That is why I must humble myself, he says, and be faithful th uh, through the church. Again, the conciliar church is not the Catholic church. When I lapsed in my duties, yada, 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 I fall each time. Well, again subjectively subjective versus objective i mean i could argue against uh what he has presented just in my own case so i mean it shouldn't go clear across the board and, and, and people listening to that shouldn't think well i can't make it uh if i'm not physically getting to a building because i have done it for quite some time now in the same way as a corrupt government doesn't make you any less as an american citizen a corrupt clergy that has fallen into material heresy by and large doesn't corrupt a faithful Catholic, and he's 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 inverting it now again. He's, he's basically saying, well, just because the priest is in material heresy doesn't mean that I am and I can go to that church. No, that's not what the church teaches. The church teaches that you must be faithful to the church and to the faith and refrain from going to those buildings. Again, it's it's it sounds very strange, but walking into a Nova sort of building like that, knowing that it's that bad and there is heresy, is like walking into a porn shop. It's illicit. It's evil. You're committing sin. That's the reality. Just because Christ is present, something is valid, as the great saints have argued, St. Thomas Aquinas and some others, doesn't mean we can be in those buildings. They do so, and they do so illicitly, and they call down the wrath of God upon themselves. You don't want to partake in that, just like the Greek and Russian, uh, Greek and Russian Orthodox priests do themselves. Now he goes on to say, how can a uh, modernist influence a person who has the eyes to see? I'm not buying any of the garbage of the modernists. So why in the world are you going into their buildings and disobeying Jesus? I don't get this argument. And again, this is the third time I'm saying it, but these are the common arguments I hear from the semi trads That's why our position is not as popular, because I can't poss possibly rationalize that Jesus would allow such a mass apostasy and that he wouldn't give me an opportunity to get the mass. Well, yeah, that's because we're in the end game. This is exactly what Jesus is allowing, and it's only going to get worse. Just wait till the great persecution, when the churches actually start closing down and or they start setting up Maitreya's images in the buildings. Are you going to be in there then? Well, you know what? I know Maitreya is not the Antichrist, but I still need a building to go to. It's got a cross in it somewhere. And I'm saying that in jest, of course, but this is the kind of rationalization that we get. Archbishop Lefebvre said you cannot go into those buildings, period. Uh, anyway, he says, this is my take. Feel f free to share your rejection, which I'm obviously doing right now. And again, I'm not quoting a uh, church council or a canon law document, and that's the problem, uh, Michael. You have to. 
In order to be a Catholic, you have to stay within the boundaries the church has established infallibly. That's what principally based Catholics do. And as Catholics, we have to be uh, people of dogma, people of principle. I'm simply speaking as a faithful Catholic, he says, who needs Christ's church. I follow and listen to your work because you offer very help, helpful material regarding uh, orthodoxy. But again, I maintain my church obligations, trusting, etc., uh, etc. Et as you yourself openly acknowledge, Catholics are going to be divided on the matter uh, where they stand until the crisis of the papacy is finally resolved, etc., etc. Et I, I respect your work. Um, he says, maybe your Puritan views are counterproductive to other councils who struggle uh, with virtue like myself and need sacraments. Well, Michael, if you need the sacraments, right, on the basis of that, having that desire for it, you will be getting those graces. It's that simple. Uh, as a matter of fact, I covered this in a blog uh, just a month ago where Padre Pio is getting advice from his spiritual director. And his spiritual director, Padre Agostino, says, in some cases, a spiritual communion is actually better than a sacramental communion. That's not my opinion. That's what he said. And, and by the way, Padre Pio has said this as well in his works. So I'm simply re reiterating what a saint of the church has said. So that's not true. I mean, again, you know, to me, it's rationalization. It's people saying, well, I just, I can't do it. I have to feel like I'm a part of, of, of something or a church or this or that. And sadly, I've said if it, people who can't process this and always have to have the need of a building, which under normal circumstances is good, um, then these people are really going to find it very difficult if you don't understand that right now. Again, you all have to do what you have to do. I'm sure Michael's not going to change what he's doing based upon what I'm saying. But my position is not going to change. Uh, I could argue that given what God has given me in, in, in my circumstances and situation, I'm doing just fine in terms of uh, you know the prayer life and still warring off temptation through God's grace or this or that. I don't feel like I'm moving in the wrong direction at all. Again. They have the buildings, we have the faith, and that's the sad times that we live in. Maybe you can only get to uh, a mass once every few months, once every six months, uh, whatever it may be. People better start adjusting to the situation rather than rationalizing the situation and, and saying, well, I just got to do it so to speak. I just, I got to be in there. I got to feel like I'm a part of the quote unquote church by going into a building that is teaching all these abominable heresies who, and by the way, you, you need to break this down even further. You need to get with your priest beforehand and see what it really teaches and, and believes. And it may be far worse than that. He may be an apostate. He may not even believe in some of the basic doctrines uh, of the church. So in the very least, we're dealing with priests who are teaching material heresy, but they may be formal heretics. They may be apostates altogether. We have apostate cardinals right now. Shornborn, Marx. This is where we are headed. As uh, Father uh, Clovis, I think was his last name, said, I mean, the anti-church and the church are working in the same space now. And it's been like that since Vatican II. That's the unfortunate thing is these semi-trad, false trads, they don't realize that. They don't see any error in Vatican II. Well, that's a big problem. So I appreciate uh, the email coming in from Michael again. Comment in the below the YouTube video. You can comment. Uh, will there actually be a blog to this? So make sure you're, you're commenting going forward. I typically don't remove comments unless I feel that someone is trolling uh, on purpose. But the bottom line is, is it's not going to it's it's not going to happen. So the people who are, you know, in the ICK crowd or the FSSP crowd, and I realize that there are some priests within those or, uh, organizations or societies that would say similar things to me. I'm just speaking generally now because they both accept Vatican II. That's how their people think. And again, from our perspective. They're wrong, even though they may agree with us privately, they will use the same arguments. Well, 
I, I got to be there. You know, I need, I need whatever. What, what we truly need is to be faithful to Jesus. If we're truly being faithful to Jesus, Jesus will work things out for us, whether we're going to a building or not. And we will get those graces. Um, so moving along, what I'd like to do is jump into today's or today's poem. I did one just yesterday, hopefully some of you had the opportunity to uh, read it. And again, Pope Leo XIII reminds us all, moreover, Christians are born for combat, whereof the greater the vehemence, the more assured, God willing, the triumph. Have confidence, for I have overcome the world, John 16, uh, 33. We also have a wonderful quote from St. Bernard. Once the crusader finds himself in the thick of battle, this knight sets aside his previous gentleness as if to say, Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? Am I not disgusted with your enemies? No matter how outnumbered they are, these crusaders, they never regard these as fierce barbarians or awe-inspiring hordes, nor do they presume on their own strength but trust in the Lord of armies to grant them the victory. So the victory is through Jesus. It's not anything on the human or the natural level. He will make the way for us. We just have to uh, walk in that path. So we've got some, you know, some wonderful quotes. We'll probably pick up right after this with uh, Leo the Thirteenth in his fight or flight uh, little little dissertation. But if I can, we'll cover this poem right now. And again, this one is entitled "No Retreat, No Surrender." Love says never, I hear the wind speak beneath these trees in the cool shades of November, I eagerly meet thee. Nay, for this fight of faith is not for the meek, O oh, who would back down or be silent in the eyes of God is deemed weak. Thus, crusader, run into the sacred heart and render, entering into a great mystery. Where's his mercies and justice meet, a love so tender, and remember all those graces once received. Amidst those cruel battles with the oppressor, press forward, for love has already won. And through our one common faith, his sacred heart has brought us all together. Nigh tis by his holy design that we flee not from the fright of the night, nor succumb to any imaginary terror. For what the enemy of souls tries to take, Christ is already awaiting and prepared to be thy defender. O glory, O heaven's light. Oh, my heart's only delight and soul's most gracious splendor. Yea, our fists were born to fight, but at the same time invite by thy love to whomsoever. It is his sacred heart which measures, however our sins which in return gives him so much displeasure. And now man in his pride thinkest he knowest better? A cruel and clever plot to bring in the man of sin this great pretender. Yea, Ye hadst better enter into a life of grace. Will ye bend to? Will you bend to man's pressure? Will ye break to accept error, or receive and promulgate this truth that was and still is, but is seemingly hidden? For the path we have chosen leads to His hearts forever. Here we stand, the chosen few, eagles amongst these wolves, with talons sharpened, with voice that cries, shouting, "No retreat, and no surrender." St. Ambrose reminds us, faith means battles. If there are no contests, it is because there are none who desire to contend. Very simple, yet profound. If there is not a contest, if there's not a war constantly being waged in your own heart against temptations, whether they're of sexual nature or they are against the faith, then it means you're spiritually dead. It truly does. Because not even the greatest saint went without daily crosses and daily battles. So hold on to that prize, my friends. This is not our home. We must stand firm in the face of so much evil, error, and heresy these days. But we will not budge. Again, referring back to what we just talked about. We are about principle. We won't break that principle. We know if we do, we will offend Jesus. If you're seeing it clearly, and again, we think that Saint, uh, the St. Athanasius of our times was Archbishop of Heaven, Father Hess. Unfortunately, most who identify as traditionalists don't, and that's why it's not 
so much of popular opinion. But there's a reason why God has to lay down the hammer because of the fact that most people don't see it clearly. We have to draw a line in the sand with Vatican II and the new liturgy and all this novelty coming from the Vatican from the past 50 plus years. It is truly tying, trying times, my friends, but times which will weed out the lover from the pretenders. So will you stand with Jesus? Will you stand with tradition? Again, comment below on the website. Look forward to seeing uh, you all commenting and interacting and um, great opportunity for people to feel uh, a part of something uh, as so many of you have reached out and, and said that you, you, you missed that. Well, here's a good opportunity uh, to do so on the website itself. Now, before we get into Leo the 13th's talk, we'll get into another writing, which comes from the gospel, I believe it was on Saturday, called These Eyes. Because the eye is the lamp of the soul. And so specifically, Jesus is speaking on the eyes of the soul. And in today's time in which we are dealing with such unbridled modesty and indecency, it is always good to rehash such fundamental teachings of Christ. It's only logical. What enters through the eyes ultimately can and will affect your soul. One does not have to spend all day in a brothel, or excuse me, one does not spend all day in a brothel unaffected by what he sees. This modern world is a brothel, so to speak, and it seems uh, virtually anywhere we go that we have to take extra care of our eyes lest we fall into the devil's snare. And that's just another point I wanted to bring up going back to Michael's email is, you know, you may be okay now for once or, uh, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months or even some months, but eventually the modernists will rub off on you and you'll start to see them as ah, not so bad. And that's ultimately why the new SSPX has been going, moving in the wrong direction because they've been rubbing up against these material heretics and they're like, eh, well, they're not as bad as uh, you know, we initially thought, and I'm not subjectively in judging their intention, I'm just saying out on the surface, it, it, it comes through their leaders and it comes through Bishop Filet, and we start seeing the same terminology that these false trads use, and so obviously they've been taking in the poison, and it's going to happen to people who continue to enter into those buildings. Uh, sin of presumption. Our eyes were meant for Christ and Christ alone. An eagle must have the inner eyes of charity wide at all times in order not to miss any opportunity arising to assist his neighbor. God gave us eyes, and so often we misuse them. Do we spend all day watching TV? Or do you have eyes for heaven alone? Do your eyes wander in vain search of pleasures and honors and all of the materi materiality that this world can provide. Wandering eyes lead to dark eyes. This is groundbreaking news for some of you. You actually have to want holiness and to strive for Christ alone. Wandering eyes are a symptom of a much deeper problem. The problem is self-love. We want anything other than Christ, which may lead to mortal sin and a darkening of the eyes altogether, so to speak. St. Paul was struck off his high horse and had God blind his mortal eyes briefly that he might turn inward. Souls who perish in mortal sin are locked with darkened eyes as their whole souls are as dark as the night now. Christ came to bring light into the world that men would no longer live in the darkness of sin, but if we do not take care of our own eyes, we will find ourselves bouncing in and out of a state of grace. Wandering eyes are dangerous and shows Christ that you are not serious about him nor salvation. Our eyes wander not only after the things of this world, but are drawn on the natural level to immodesty and indecency. It's all part of our fallen nature. Those who cannot take custody of their eyes will be enslaved by the devil. Think of how many souls are in hell who once loved Christ but lost their souls due to these wandering eyes. So all eyes must be on Christ, but modern man wants to be in his own spotlight. We all have to battle against this disease of me, I call it. However, we cannot advance in the spiritual life unless we first learn to deny ourselves. Constant and habitual movements of the heart toward Christ is what every Christian is after. We know that we ought, we know what we ought to do in the end, uh, 
but will we give Christ our eyes even as we profess to give him our bodies? If we don't give him our eyes, how can we give him the whole of ourselves? If we keep focus on Christ, how could we possibly sin further? Therefore, what do you pursue? What is your heart's intention? Do you want to see the eyes of Christ in sadness any longer over the laxity and lukewarmness that we all show towards him at times? Do you want to perish in sin and behold the devil's face forever with darkened eyes? Or do you want to be caught in the endless rapture with the eyes of your maker? Let us not strive for just a little light, but rather let the whole world see Christ in the reflection of your own eyes. And again, this came from scripture uh, on Saturday, Luke 11, 33 uh, through 36. And it's something for us to all meditate upon. Not only this day, but just in general, we should all meditate upon the horrors of, of hell daily. We should all meditate upon uh, Christ's own passion daily, of course, you sh you should be taking the advice of someone like Bishop Williamson and, and, and doing uh, 15 decades of the rosary. I know personally I, I need to do a better job in this area consistently, but have some structure to your life. You should value silence and solitude, and without the interior life, without prayer, all of this, all the other stuff is simply meaningless. Again, what we're trying to do here at Trad Cat Night, and I, again, I spend the majority of my time with non-Catholics as opposed to Catholics, because this is where God has called me to, is to awaken people for con conversions, uh, but for, to help people understand that de these are the times we live in. And unfortunately, the vast majority who identify as Catholics kind of scoff at the notion that this possibly could be the end times. And that's pretty frightening considering these people are literally swimming into the the jaws mouth you know the, the shark's mouth if you will of the one world religion folks before we transition on into the next segment or next article i remind you all to please consider uh this apostolate as it relates to uh finances uh appreciate all of the letters that have been coming in recently uh, all the prayers, all the support, got wonderful gifts even from several of you this past week, and it truly is uh, moving to say the least. I know you all are out there praying as hard as you can, making reparation to the Sacred Heart through the Immaculate Heart. And we're all trying to do, you know, our best, our share, if you will. And uh, this is one area uh, that I could use your help in. Again, we're going to try to make a Another push, as long as my health stays somewhat together, the intent as of now is to start doing special guest radio shows and uh, in the not-so-distant future, in, in the new year. So um, we really want to try to continue to spread this apostolate, and we're going to use all means necessary to get as many eyes as we can on this work because from our perspective, the majority are not seeing this. Uh, properly and many people are going to be sideswiped and everyone is going to be affected by what is coming uh, in the not so distant future not only from the, the theological church side but just uh, you know economically uh, the revolutions that are coming everyone's going to be affected every person uh, every community will be touched and this is by God's design he has to get man's attention this is the only way he can do it and uh but nevertheless, folks, again, send an email to Apostle of Mary for your cash uh, financial contribution consideration. And I truly do uh, appreciate it. It's the Lord's money. That's how I view money. I don't view anything as my own, not even my body as my, is my own. As I've been finding out these past seven years, God will do what he wants to do on this body, and I simply have to get with the program. Same thing with... Uh, as it relates to money, it's it's his. And so pray about it. We I see where to use it, how to use it, whether it's for my particular ministry or whether it's whether it's for the website itself. Uh, but again, please do consider it. Now, some of you, hopefully all of you, um, have read the latest TCK briefing as it relates to the latest false prophet slash antichrist message called the Art of 
cooperation. And what's interesting to note about this particular edition, the latest edition of the New Ages magazine, is that anti-Pope Francis uh, made the edition. That was one of the highlights, or lowlights, however you want to say it. And as I've been mentioning, my good friends, Francis is a true anti-Pope, but he's not the biblical false prophet, as so many Catholics and even fundamentalists are suggesting. There is another step in this revolutionary process to undermine the church and the papacy. The true false prophet, a.k.a. the Master Jesus, will be one of these ascended masters of Antichrist Maitreya. Now, these masters, if you will, will be formally introduced to the world after the economic collapse on international TV in what's called a Day of Declaration. A false prophet will not want to be called Pope in his own words and his own writings, but he will assume control over the quote-unquote Christian churches after the dominoes begin to fall in Europe. There will be all kinds of chaos, and I'm sure Islam at that point will be really wreaking havoc. But in this particular uh, briefing, if you will, uh, I cover the latest as to what the enemy is suggesting. And as a Christian, you need to know what they are saying. You need to know what the enemy is up to. So art of cooperation. What does this mean? Cooperation is simply a fancy-dancy way of saying we need socialism, just like the other verbiage coming out of the Vatican and New Age camp, such as sharing. This is trigger word for socialism. Let us not fool ourselves, folks. The New World Order will be socialist at first and then progress into all-out communism, if you will, during the Great Tribulation, in my humble opinion. They want a le legitimate redistribution of wealth and resources across the board. This will become more apparent after the economic collapse occurs here in the USA. So if you think the times are tough now, we ain't seen nothing yet. So you better get off the grid while you can now. They want to control the food and water supply as best they can so they can dictate who gets to eat or drink in this great supposed utopia to come. Kind of like that Mad Max movie, I suppose, for those of you who have seen it. It's kind of Antichrist figure who's got control of all the resources and kind of distributes it as he sees fit and whoever worships him whoever comes to pay homage to him in this latest message from the false prophet he talks about a new science coming and again this is something I've been warning about we have to understand that the new world order governments of the world USA included will say that the aliens are here and to some degree there's already news like that as a matter of fact I was on some alternative news site the other day and now they're saying China is formally saying to some degree that, the, you know, the aliens have always been here. So it's kind of like leaking out a little bit more and more. Now, this quote-unquote new science is close to being formally introduced uh, to the world through these fallen angels that are amongst us right now. Yes, there are fallen angels in the flesh who are walking amongst us right now. Now, again, the book of Enoch, although it's not in... Uh, our Catholic Bible, certainly there's a lot of evidence and a lot of, well, I guess you could say dis disturbing elements to it that tie in with the fallen angels and, and so on and so forth. I know some of you uh, truly do um, enjoy reading uh, that particular book, but it, it truly does tie in with what we're talking about. We have to understand that the New World Order will further reinterpret Scripture and say those nasty fundamentalists have always got it wrong. So we already see how perverted the hijacked Vatican is in regards to their interpretations of Scripture already, and it's certainly not going to get any better. One area they talk about is discovering our divinity. Well, Pope St. Pius X warned that man, in the end times under the Antichrist, would eventually think themselves to be God. And goodness, are we not getting close to that time when the majority, formally, publicly, sadly say so there's no more christ then what true christ a new self-realization program will be installed at rome under the false prophet wherein all can worship the beast in his image and speak about how divine man is the elder brothers which they constantly talk about 
uh, are simply the demons of the air who will aid the Antichrist in his seduction of the world. This Save Our Planet propaganda was also reinforced in this latest magazine as a part of the Agenda 21 program. They will capitalize on the passing of the Planet X system and use it to their further advantage of redistributing wealth and resources across the world. Truly manipulative and deceitful. Now they also speak of karma. How many Catholics do you know always use this term, which is highly new age? They say that karma is behind all of the recent disasters that we've been seeing, including the United States. I hate, hate to break the news to you, but it's not karma, but rather a jealous, just God trying to get the attention of the peoples of the world. And more specifically speaking, it's actually man trying to play God with a lot of this geoengineering going on. So God is simply allowing the evil. When will men who truly profess Christ, stand up against the wickedness. Their signs of time section, yes, they have one of those. It's loaded with Project Blue Beam material. Again, man trying to play God. They have control of all of the media virtually, so they can manipulate how they want people to think. Oh, yes, that was Jesus on the clouds, and they'll show a picture of a supposed Jesus, you know, walking on a cloud. No, it wasn't, folks. It was Project Blue Beam. And these false signs and lying prodigies will become ever more pervasive in the not-so-distant future as they will be appearing more on mainstream TV. More UFO propaganda, which will tie into this whole end times deception. As a matter of fact, as I'm saying, I just went through another mainstream article and they're saying they just found another planet uh, in our solar system that could have life on it. And you're going to see all kinds of articles like that. they got to get people to believe that there really are interplanetary beings out there and that's not what we're dealing with at all there are no good aliens coming to save save humanity or the anunnaki they're not here to help us evolve these demons of the air they're here to manipulate and control in reality men of goodwill interesting term being used uh by the new age camp because we see this a lot even in the, the vatican II conciliar church um, so men of goodwill, they say, will respond to Maitreya. And again, we hear this a lot in the conciliar church, the men of goodwill. And not that it was not ever used before Vatican II. It's just obviously implied differently now due to the false ecumenical program of Rome, which comes from Freemasonry. We all are a part, to some degree, the church, they will say. Heck, even atheists are okay, so long as they obey our conscience, as Francis has said. Now talk about a setup for the Antichrist. This is truly frightening to think how many professed Christians will abandon the true Christ for the Antichrist and the great apostasy soon to come. Who could argue, seeing everything that we see coming out of Rome, and perhaps even in your local diocese, that this is not that far off? Take a look at the heretical Protestants, furthermore, getting all giddy about their uh, the faithless Jews saying the Messiah is here. Folks, that's not our Messiah that they're talking about. It goes to show you how Zionism has fooled so many into a heretical belief structure. And I say that because I know some people who profess Catholicism, who even attend SSPX chapels, who have fallen for Zionism. And technically speaking, they are not Catholic. No Zionist is. This is a heresy from the last hundred years or so. You will notice how the false prophet of Maitreya in their articles always speak of the self positively and this self-realization and self-determination. I just got into a, a debate with a uh, prostitute on the phone where she was trying to make it seem like self-esteem was good. Oh, you're just a man of no self of low self-esteem and blah blah blah. You have to. This is what you have to say to girls, whatever. And I said, you just proved my point. We're not supposed to have any. We're not supposed to have any esteem. <laughs> we're supposed to be empty so that Christ can fill us. So she was only proving my point. So those types of people are perfectly set up to taking the mark of the beast because they're full of themselves. What did our Lord teach, rather? Self-denial, right? So this is the complete opposite. Hence, we are dealing with an anti-religion, which opposes the true religion, Catholicism. Now, the, the magazine goes on to say, Wise words from anti-Pope Francis. And they didn't use the word anti-Pope, but Francis, of course. Oh, goodness. Is it possible 
for wise words to be flowing out of someone who openly teaches as many heresies as he has done has done who constantly attacks true catholics who seemingly is going to promulgate or put forth a new ecumenical right which probably will occur in 2018 with protestants now in this section on their magazine the multiculturalist agenda is being shoved down our throats time and time again if i personally hear solidarity one more time from some novus ordite i will puke i truly will when will professed catholics realize that they are following the principles of a completely different religion this is globalism at its finest folks and god is not a globalist in this sense he wants men to return to the truth of the catholic religion founded by christ he wants nations to be uh nations not a hodgepodge one world socialist republic get out of vatican II churches while you can and what we'll do next is get into the seven ways now in which the new world order can deceive and this is just seven of them goodness we could spend a a whole eight hour program talking about how the the new world order deceives but i think many of you now are beginning to wake up and see the facade of of, of mainstream media and see that pretty much everything around us is phony baloney uh it's it's not reality it's kind of like we're living in in, in a ongoing movie if you will because that's really what it is with crisis actors and scripted puppet leaders whether it's trump or whether it's the the goober over there in north korea who's also a freemason they're, they're virtually all freemasons um in fact i would be shocked to, to find one leader of the nations that really wasn't in all honesty at this point few and far between uh, but nevertheless, Christ said to expose the darkness, and this is one of the things I tried to do at Tradcat Night. So a lot of the arguments come back, well, you just focus on the negativity, and you just focus on uh, the fear aspect. No, that's not true. Anyone who's uh, read any of my works know that I cover the interior life uh, quite often. But again, the premise of this is to get those people who are saying that out of the Vatican II churches, and they're just resistant to that. They don't want to see that. They don't want to see what they're following is, isn't actually Catholic. So, it's again, it's a rationalization. Uh, it's, you know, it's an argument that, that stems from rationalization of them not wanting to change ultimately. So, make no mistake, there is a conspiracy to deceive not only Catholics, but humanity as a whole. These agents of Antichrist have been long impregnated into our society and have been working within the ranks of the church and the state to prepare the way for their new false messiah to come. It seems, as of late, they're not even to try, trying to hide their agendas. Uh, but nevertheless, it is helpful to further unmask these certain areas so that uh, we can understand this end times deception more deeply. So, in this particular article, I covered seven different ways in which the New World Order deceives and how we must resist this revolutionary process lest we fall into the arms of the Antichrist himself. Government is here to help question mark in general from a catholic perspective this could be a good thing if our leaders were actually catholic and followed the teachings of the church as per uh, as catholics we profess the social kingship of christ and not the masonic religious liberty in which this uh, masonic country was founded upon they say they are here to help us but those awake know their end game it will be either accept the socialist slash communist uh new world order that they profess where it's going to be off with your head at the local fema camp the socialists want your kids they want your homes they literally want your body so that they can totally control you they say this is what's best for you however resistant minded folks will have nothing to do with this luciferian regime now coming into full light more police state more surveillance state and more personal freedoms taken from the masses globalism is the only solution uh, they will rant as if the church hasn't already said what would work for a properly ordered Christian society. The problem is the Masons and Marxists are inside the church teaching their false doc doctrines, trying to get others to falsely obey. Yes, the government is here to help you. Cough, cough. They are here to help you get, get you to your grave much earlier. 
Now, they give you the illusion that you have choice on a certain level. Imagine a world where the stage is set and the actors are already in place, yet the viewing audience actually believes what is taking place is not already rehearsed. This is the world in which we live in today. And this is why so many semi-trads fall into false positions and fall into conservatism rather than Catholicism. This is the world in which we live, I repeat. Elections at the presidential level do not give you any choice. Trump is a part of the same club as Hillary. That's a reality. He was in the swamp long before ever talking about it. He's a 33rd degree Scottish Freemason whose dirty money has come from the Jewish mob, as we pointed out on radio shows before in the past and other articles. He's an ardent Zionist who is helping to actually prepare the way for Antichrist, literally. He's now preparing the Middle East for a proposed peace plan, which will not be long-lived, of course. Furthermore, you can, as someone free to choose, go into the grocery store and choose what you like. Yes, you can choose as many GMOs as you want, ladies and gentlemen, because 97 plus percent of what you're going to get from a grocery store has poisons in them and everything that is sold. You can choose what health problems you want by taking a certain vaccine and so on and so forth, or with Big Pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, as we pointed out today on the website. Now they're trying to control blood pressure. Now they lowered blood pressure to, I think it was like 130 over 80. Now, you know, over 50% of the population has high blood pressure, which means they're trying to get more people on these nasty blood pressure pills. And I've been on a few of them, folks. And I've been in and out of the hospital a few times because of them. They're nasty. In the end, several Catholic seers had said that the liberty of conscience granted to people will be abused. And what sound mind can argue against that in our times? You can now choose to be a girl if you are currently a boy. You can choose to be called whatever you like. It is truly a mad world that we live in. How about fake news? This has been contrived by those behind the New World, New World Order in order to paint clear-thinking people as loon birds, right? Conspiratorial types. The same type of thing. And by the way, these are the semi, what the semi-trads gobble up. I can't tell me how, how many times when I pass along cer certain information, uh, you know, it immediately gets labeled as fake news. Some, sometimes the article's not even read if I ask them. Uh, and then you go on to their timeline on social media, it becomes clear. You know, these are people following Bishop Barron and Kupich. And, I mean, these people are heretics. I mean, they're gobbling up the whole fake news propaganda. Now, the same type of thing is going on inside the church with such phrases as Pharisee or you're just a fundamentalist or a rigorist. And it's coming out of these Masonic puppets installed in Rome and in your local diocese. The reality is mainstream media news doesn't correspond to reality. They all have agendas. They need to sell them through the puppet newscaster that you are watching. I've recently been attacked uh, by heretics, as I have said, uh, who are following the illicit and heretical teachings of Vatican II. And again, clamoring fake news. Francis would never support a, a global one world government as if John Paul II and Benedict XVI didn't say it either. Wink, wink. The ones eating the garbage the mainstream news are feeding are the ones en route to taking the mark this world is a lie didn't jesus say not say that his kingdom was not of this world and yet you believe the mainstream media talk about delusional so again we have this other buzzword conspiracy you know, and you'll hear this in the false you know false trad circles unfortunately with you know, you, you see it so often talked about with, with people following the remnant or the one Peter five crowd. Well, that's just conspiracy. No, it's just you actually really haven't studied it and you don't know how to talk about it, really. You know, as if the enemies of God would never conspire against him, both on the church level, but also the state level and all of these other agendas that they have, which are outside the church. So it extends beyond uh, theology, if you will. And that's what makes Tradcat trad cat night so different is we're going to talk about those things that would be labeled as crazy talk when it's not i've talked with some of these people they have no idea because they don't study it and they don't pay attention to it and they'll just sweep it under the rug and i pray to god that they don't take the mark of the bees i hope they wouldn't be that stupid but i guess you never could you know you never can know at this point 
Have we ever heard of Lucifer and his fall from heaven? Talk about conspiracy. Nah, but that's just fake news, Eric. There's no such thing as Lucifer, a modernist would say, right? There's not even hell anymore, according to some. The economy is good? Really? I am no formal economist, but I have had some of my show and some of the top economic minds the world has had to offer in times past, and none of them say that this Ponzi scheme called the economy will make it much longer. The question is, why would the New World Order have you to believe everything is quite all right presently? Well, I believe that is open for debate. Feel free to comment below, as I mentioned, both on YouTube and then also on the blog itself. Let's get the conversation going. I hope to see you all daily, and I'll interact. That's where I'll be interacting daily is on the website and in the comment section, so visit there. Uh, but perhaps is it quite possible that the mainstream media, the New World Order, they want to lull the masses to sleep so they, that they are not currently urgent in their prepping. Uh, they truly, obviously, don't want clear-thinking citizens. Assuredly, they don't want these same citizens armed and self-sufficient. In order for the mark of the beast to come about, there must first be a collapse on all levels. They must have cash outlawed so that they can get everyone quote-unquote chipped. It is only logical if you are paying attention to the news and seeing progression from a paper economy to a digital one. Now, how about on the level of materialism? What about this propaganda and deception, right? The more wealth that you have, the better, quote-unquote, you are off. And I get this all the time, and I get into debate with escorts who seem to think that they're 10K a day. This is what qualifies a great life, when they're literally one breath away from hell. That's not a good life from a Christian perspective. So they have been duped. They have been deceived. Now, we are having this propaganda shoved down our throats. With all the commercials that we see on TV, one of the reasons why perhaps we should not have them in the first place, how about the celebrity tools of the elite, especially in the rap industry, shoving this down our throats? You can be cool and have a lot of cool things, but absolutely have no morals. Yep, that's the way to go. They will pitch to the youth. I don't think this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, do you? It is from the devil himself who turns men away from Christ and towards the world ultimately in its pleasures. You are a deceived man of ambition. I have been both rich and poor, you could say, and I've never been closer to Christ or felt more secure uh, than when I was supposedly without. The New World Order sure does manipulate minds into thinking we can abolish poverty, right? That's the latest thing coming out of the Vatican and, of course, with Agenda 21. It all ties in with socialism. Apparently, people have never read Scripture where our Lord said that the poor ye will always have. Not that we shouldn't try to help out the poor. In general, that would be absurd to say, but there is an agenda behind this, which um, Bella Dodd, by the way, uh, made mention of this in the School of Darkness, and there's a good video on that which you can watch. School of Darkness, Bella Dodd, infiltration of the churches, and this is how the socialists and Marxists would, would work the angle. They would, would use the poverty card. How about protecting the earth? On the surface level, this sure does look noble, does it not? But their end game is not. That's the problem. The early church fathers warned eventually that Rome would return to ancient paganism, and that's what we are en route to. Save the seals and plug your microwave and carpool when you can. This is all part of the Agenda 21 deception in which the impotent humanitarianism becomes all but obvious to clear-thinking minds. Mother, Ga Mother Gaia worship and paganism in general is on the rise, folks, and many are abandoning the true religion due to their inability to abide by the basic parameters that have been laid down by Christ and his church through doctrine. They don't want to be one of the nasty fundamentalists that the world is pointing their finger at. Again, self-love will have you abandon the true faith. It means that we, in the end, have a generation full of themselves, and this is a perfect setup for the man of lawlessness and his religion of self that is forthcoming. This new quote-unquote religion is purely crass and void of any divine origin. In the end, it amounts to obey your conscience, if you will, and... They will say, you're okay with God. Be a pagan and protect the earth and you will have everlasting life, is the new motto. And said, no true believer ever. 
We are not offending Mother Earth, but God Almighty, who created the Earth. Now how about the aliens and the Ascended Masters are here to help us evolve and to help humanity? Yeah, sure they are. Go on with it, buddy. This is another great psyop to get people to believe aliens are actually not demons and that the Ascended Masters are actually not fallen angels. We should all see how society is progressing. Now, to the liberal, this is good that they will argue. They want a communist, new age, lawless republic. To the Christian, we want to return to truth, do we not? A truth left behind to Christ and his Catholic Church. And yet, surprisingly, I still meet resistance from those professed Catholics in this area. I'm afraid a good number will fall for this alien deception as they think that the Vatican is running a tight ship these days. No pun intended. Through the alien agenda, they can build their greater united humanity wherein people of all religions will seem to be okay, but God has other designs, which involve, unfortunately, a vast elimination of humanity altogether, in the future now how about you the un being a model for peace in these times hmm how does that contradict with the message of fatima my traditionalist friends how could a christian ever think this the same un for uh, uh forcing agenda 21 on us the same un which will have the antichrist as its leader now we know our lady of fatima came in 1917 to clear the air concerning the role of communism in these end times but very few listen and still even fewer will act upon it. Let's say it like that. Now, the hijacked Vatican does not want you to know the real third secret of Fatima for good reason, lest you think there is actually an ongoing apostasy in the church. But through the intercession of Our Lady, the world will be able to transition into the post-apocalyptic planet X world. It is through Our Lady Christ and the Catholic Church that this world can once again have any semblance of peace about it. One baptism, one faith, and one heart through Mary, coming from our source and end, Jesus himself. When they shall say, peace and safety, well, you know the rest, folks. Furthermore, the whole social justice movement serves the Antichrist. Everybody has to have rights and equality, while the moral code continues to decay away. My opinion on quote-unquote faith is just as good as yours, the new world order types will say. We all just have to get together and get along and eat jelly donuts together and talk about how war should be outlawed. Yes, this is a true pacifist dream, and yet it is these types who are the perfect candidates for the new age. So what else comes to mind on your end? Again, I would like to hear from you in the comment section. Post your comments on YouTube right now. I'll get right back to you. Again, I can be found predominantly now on the website itself getting back to your comments as soon as i can post a comment below in the blog section itself and so that about wraps up the section um for talks that i will be giving uh for my own uh writings that is i did want to briefly if i could find uh the talk with Leo the 13th and the fight or uh, flight material. This was something that was posted by someone in the resistance and off the top of my head. I cannot, oh, I can't think of who it was off the top of my head. Once I actually find it, we can probably reference it. Uh, but anyway, Leo the, the, the 13th, you know, in this very timely piece, uh, in an encyclical that he wrote, um, said this, in the same manner touching the Christian faith are other duties who exact and religi religious observance necessary at all times in the interest of uh, eternal salvation become more especially so in our days. Amidst such reckless and widespread folly of opinion, it is, as we have said, the office of the church to undertake the defense of truth and uproot errors from the mind and this change has to be, at all times, sacredly observed by her. Uh, but when necessity compels, not only those who are invested with power of rule are bound to safeguard the truth of faith, St. Thomas maintains each one is under obligation to show forth his faith, either to instruct or encourage others of the faithful, or to re retell, repel the attacks of unbelievers. 
He says to recoil before an enemy or to keep silence when all sides uh, such clamors are raised against truth is part of a man either devoid of character or who entertains doubt as to the truth that he professes to believe. In both cases, such mode of behaving is base and insulting to God, and both are incompatible with the salvation of mankind. This kind of conduct is profitable only to the enemies of the faith, for nothing emboldens the wicked so greatly as the lack of courage on the part of the good to actually point this out. So, <clears throat> you know, there'll be arguments all the time. Well, Eric, why do you always point out these these things of Francis? You have never you have never anything nice to say about Francis. Well, that's because objectively speaking, Francis is an enemy of the church. What he teaches isn't the Catholic faith, and we have to keep pointing this out so more and more people come to that conclusion. And I'm going to batter it, and I'm going to hammer it down into your brain until you finally submit and say yes he is objectively an enemy of the church because of his freemasonic teachings and we have to stand for the truth for tradition and <coughs> the pre-vatican two popes support uh work that i do they support others who are doing the same it doesn't come out of some sort of hatred for francis or hatred of those following vatican two this is absurd it is on the objective level to point out truth from error because where people like Francis are leading people is into death, destruction, and hell, objectively speaking. And that's the reality. If you don't see it that way, I'm sorry. You're in the wrong. It's never going to change. At some point, you're going to have to wake up. There's only so long that you can hide your head in the sand like an ostrich. What What is the breaking point for you? If not now, when? When the ecumenical right comes? When you're literally sitting in the same pew as some Lutheran heretic, and you're looking over at him saying, yep, you're good, I'm good. What's the breaking point for you? Seriously. It's really sad times to see people so full of self-love that they cannot speak up for the true faith and demand that our priests and pastors repent of their errors. Christians are more overborn for combat, Leo the Thirteenth said. Remember, we talked about this earlier. Whereof the greater the vehemence, the more assured God aiding the triumph. Have confidence, for I have overcome the world. The organization and constitution of Christian society can in no wise be changed. And this is exactly what the New World Order is trying to do. Neither can any one of its members live as he may choose, nor elect the mode of fighting which best pleases him. For in effect, he scatters and gathers, uh, not who gathers with the church with Jesus Christ, and all who fight not jointly with him and with the church are in the very truth contending against God. So it goes back to our original premise. Again, they're the ones who have left the church and the faith as Archbishop of Feb, not us. So again, the, you know, 90 plus percent of the buildings that identify and have Catholic on front of it and supposedly are in communion with Rome, they're outside the church. They're not Catholic buildings. We are in apostasy leading up to the great apostasy. And for those who think that's such a comical and stupid position, I remind everyone of the Arian crisis where nine out of every 10 bishops was a heretic. And they were the people laughing and mocking. They, if we were to go back in time, they would be sitting in one of those buildings that were Aryan, calling themselves Catholic. That's just the sad uh, reality of our times. My good friends, what would you like to see on Trad Cat Night? Needing further feedback, if you could comment, um, leave some of your comments in regards to that. That would further uh, help me out what you would like to see. On some of these radio shows, I've been trying to do a little bit more uh, general apologetics as I can on a daily basis. Um, but I try to I try to be as accommodating as I can. Uh, I will get the new Trad Cat Night uh, mailer out for those who have sent in comments via email. We'll try to piece that together and get that out to you uh, by Sunday at the very latest. But we have to remember what the church teaches. And there was a great teacher in the church, Father Dennis Fahey, in regards to the social kingship of Christ. And he's got a great book called The Kingship of Christ, which was written in 1931. And he truly exposed 
a lot of what we're seeing today. And he saw this great battle between naturalism and supernaturalism because the new age religion is going to be very naturalistic. They're going to say it's divine and they're going to say man is divine and just come worship this beast character who represents quote unquote man and it will be completely uh, void of the supernatural. And so there is this war between Freemasonry and Catholicism, ultimately between Satan and God. We frequently see it stated that modern constitutions are the embodiment of the spirit of the present age of progress as the principles of state organization of the 13th century express the ideas of that obscurantist epic. Behind this attitude, there is, of course, the horrible error with which pantheism and materialism have so impregnated modern minds, namely that there is not one definite order laid down by the true God and man's return to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, the present order, instead of being taken for the disease, which it really is, is looked upon as a sign of health. Scary. This is great analysis by Father Fahey. It is only when minds have been poisoned that such a mistake could be made. Now, as point, uh, Pope Leo XIII points out, that modern so-called statesmen are simply introducing the domain of morality and politics, what the naturalists and rational, rationalists lay down in ph philosophy. Another influence tending in the same direction has been and is the success of human reason in the practical conquest of matter, that is, in the utilization of the forces of nature for man's purposes. These currents have contributed considerably to what following Pope Leo XIII uh, would call naturalism or the naturalistic spirit of the age. The spirit is characterized, as they have been said, by the denial of the divine supernatural life coming to us from our Lord Jesus Christ crucified. And by the social refusal to take into account that the supernatural life and the order of its flow into our souls, accompanied, of course, by the claim to be able to make good men and good citizens by purely natural efforts, right? This impotent humanitarianism that we're seeing since Vatican II, the Sicilianist movement, truly ties in with Freemasonry. It's highly seductive. The propagation of naturalism prior to and since French, French Revolution is characterized by organization. The spirit of this age is neither the inevitable result of the necessary progress of the human race, nor the product of individual efforts with a more or less haphazard coordination. But what then is this organization aiming at the promotion of naturalism and atheism? One short quote from Pius XII will suffice. Excuse me, the seventh will suffice. Uh, in one of his encyclicals, the Pope applied to the Italian secret society of the Carbonari the condemnation of Clement the Twelfth and of Benedict the Fourteenth against the Freemasons, saying that along with these latter, they propagate indifference in religion, the most dangerous of all systems. And of course, that's what we're seeing through the false ecumenical program of Vatican II. Masonry, then, is the organized promoter of the natural man's contempt for God's plan of restoration of the supernatural life of the world, with, of course, inevitably, the persecution of the church by the state, which is what's coming, the great persecution, right? We'll be handed over and we'll have to stand before judges, Jesus even said. That, that hasn't hit yet, and it is coming, where the majority of a building, which, which, which right now are laden with at least material heresy, will simply become apostate as of Father Malachi Martin said, he said, unless we accept right now that we're en route to the great apostasy and that the church was, will become null and void, that is when Maitreya's image is set up and the formalized one world religion will be established and you can no longer go in these buildings, you I mean you would hope that the people following Vatican II would at least stop at that step, right? But one can never know. Now, Father Fahey goes on to say, state supremacy over an indifference to all religions is then the steady aim of Freemasonry. But there has been a difference in the mode of the procedure of masonry in Protestant Catholic countries. And it is well at this point to say a very uh, few words about it. Protestants find little difficulty in accepting that religion be a purely private matter, since logically for them all visible churches are purely human organizations. And again, you know, going back to our initial premise, you know, what I am suggesting to you is, is not Protestant, Protestantism at all. So it's not as if there are no 
Catholic Church is to go to, we, we need to realize what the early church fathers said about the apostasy, that it's going to seem like the church is gone altogether. And that's, that's not my words, that's their words. The, the, the main religion or the global dominant religion won't be uh, the Catholic Church, right? As we know, it will be this church more universal than the Catholic Church, as Pope St. Pius X said. And it will encompass everyone from, you know, from any religion who will bow down and take the mark of the beast. That is going to be the dominant religion. About two-thirds of the world will, will flow along with it if we follow the consensus of Catholic prophecy. So it's going to be very difficult to find buildings uh, at that point, even more so than now. As Catholics, on the contrary, believe in the existence of one true church, though which although one becomes member of the mystical body of Christ, which they know to be supranational, and to which they claim that all states should be indirectly uh, subordinate in view of man's real end, union with God in a supernatural life, they are bound to oppose this sectioning of public and private life. In the Latin countries, in spite of much decay down to the French Revolution, the social institutions retained the impress of the kingship of Christ. Revolution then has always been aimed at by masonry in these countries in order to get rid of the existing social structure in which the kingship of Christ is respected. And that's why America has never been a Christian country. We've always been a Masonic country because we've always preached religious liberty, which is a basic principle of Freemasonry. And to essentially install naturalism. It's only natural and logical to follow that conclusion. In Protestant countries, on the account of the public rejection of God's order, the gradual ousting of what is uh, retained of our Lord's doctrine from the Constitution and public life of the country uh, goes on inevitably. The advent of naturalism in Protestant countries being only a question of time, uh, there is, in general, no need for masonry to take forcible ste steps for the uprooting of the past. Satan can there afford to bide his time in the struggle against Christ the King. And so Father Fahey goes on to talk more about uh, the Freemasonic connection with the Revolution, uh, 1789, and, and so forth. Uh, and furthermore, he said, there is no need after what has been written to dwell upon uh, certain of the influences that were and are working against the kingship of Christ in Ireland specifically. Freemasonry and that sub-masonry, the Orange Society, were, of course, two of them. Uh, before passing on, however, it will be well to draw the attention to another influence that was directed against our country's acceptance of Christ the King, Article 19 of the Constitution of the Irish uh, Republican Brotherhood. So he's now making that correlation between Freemasonry in Ireland, specifically in Ireland's fallen apart too. We see they've accepted same-sex marriage and it's moving in the wrong direction as well. We've got to pray for all countries. It's not just the United States which is falling apart, folks. It makes any th thoughtful mind sad to contemplate the state of slavery that is being prepared for future generations in the name of liberty and progress, right? How many American do you know? Americans do you know that stand behind uh, American liberty? Well, this is not what it is. To, and, they, and then they identify as a Christian. And truly they're not. They are heretics. Uh, but the bottom line is we, we cannot both embrace masonry and Catholicism at the same time. Because Catholicism is true Christianity. And again, masonry is behind republics. Masonry is behind democracies. We really don't have time uh, to get into that whole uh, spiel as I've done talks about that before in the past and i truly want to get moving here because we're already an hour and 25 minutes and we'll spend the last 20 minutes or so uh getting into some of what is on uh, my timeline if you will uh recently posted folks as it relates to well you know what let's do some of the the latest end time headlines here and this is from the past 24 hours china ordering the U.S. to stop carrying out military exercises off in North Korea. So again, just more back and forth uh, between the nations over there in the Pacific, in Asia. Again, when they shall see peace and safety, we know what will happen. It's just a matter of time. I, re I really hate posting that type of news even every few days. So I try to limit that a little bit just because that, that, that propaganda is going to be going back and forth, I think, for quite some time. Um but nevertheless, it's something we've got to pray about. I mean, once it starts to happen, we need to realize with the technology that they have right now, how many, you know, millions, even billions of lives that can be lost there in a very short period of time. 
we're not even talking weeks, uh, would be a matter of days at this point. So it's going to be more catastrophic than World War One and, and two put together. So uh, this is something that we've got to continue to pray for. And the other day, um, Dabu7 and I believe oh, several other YouTube channels cover how they're starting to see massive tank movement um, after the building of tanks, you know, them being put upon trains and being moved about throughout the United States. Well, that activity is really picking up and it doesn't take a, a real rocket scientist to, to figure out uh, ultimately what will be happening in conjunction with World War III is obviously after the economic collapse, the uh, martial law will be declared and, you know, the government will be here to protect us. Going back to our talk on deception and more of the police state will be solidified and woof. It's, it's going to be truly trying times, folks, so we've got to continue to pray our rosary. Now, destructive floods. There's been a lot of flooding going on lately, and Athens uh, has been the latest, and, and one of the latest reports um, is that now 15 are killed in the catastrophic Athens floods, which have recently uh, taken place. In persecution news and trying to get kick the Bible and Christ out of, well, not only this country, but just in general, a Georgia school district bans coaches from praying with team. And uh, apparently this particular football team in Georgia uh, decided to pray anyway, going against these orders. So we will see what happens. But this is becoming more and more common. A lot of these coaches are being suspended or being fired. And uh, again, there was one mystic who said, <clears throat> in relation to these FEMA camps, she said, Nothing will happen until a public banning on prayer. Once there's a formal public banning on prayer, that's when people go away to the FEMA camps. So that's why we try to pay attention to some of that news. Um, and I forget what mystic it was. I actually did a, a picture of it on Defeat Modernism some years ago. I'll have to look it up and maybe post it again. But uh, that can be found in, in Yves DuPont's Catholic Prophecy Book or The Great Chastisement, uh, the forthcoming chastisement. I encourage you all to read that. We recently had a strong earthquake in Japan, 6.2. We've had swarms of earthquakes out on the California coast. Um, just taking a look again here today, my goodness, just even the past few hours. Kettleman City, Malibu, California, swarms of quakes. Uh, another big earthquake in Mexico today, 5.0. Idaho, 3.0 near Yellowstone, uh, California, uh, the geysers. 3.0 just south of Panama was struck with a 5.2 uh, just minutes ago um, New Caledonia 4.7 Solomon Islands 5.6 that's a big one uh, another one in Mexico uh, New Caledonia actually had a huge swarm today goodness oh man just taking a look at this for the first time today well over about two dozen earthquakes of about 5.0 or greater in the New Caledonia uh, area. And so, wow, that's not a good sign for those uh, living out in that area. But anyway, as you know, we try to cover the earthquakes because as Planet X gets closer, it, as it relates to the birth pangs, the earthquakes will get more violent. There will be m more in f uh, frequency and duration, if you will. And as these contractions or as Planet X gets closer, the contractions between or intervals between these massive quakes will be shortened up until the point where we reach the height of the Great Tribulation. Uh, we'll be locked into a 10.0 earthquake, and the Earth will just shake, as the Apocalypse says, and as Catholic prophecy suggests. We'll be locked into like a 10.0 earthquake for, you know, three days straight. A lot of sonic booms being heard. Uh, across the country. I'll get to this a little bit more specifically on my timeline, but uh, just recently in the past 24 hours, North Alabama is now reporting that they're hearing these strange, uh, not only strange noises, but sonic booms. Uh, how about the update on the deadly plague in Madagascar? It's now escalating, uh, and they're now saying that this, it, it may not go away at all. It, it may just stay and then just continue to take over not only their country, but you know, spread throughout. Another sad article, if you will. Nearly half of people 65 or over on at least five drugs a day. And again, this is what Big Pharma wants. 
they want you to be locked into not only blood pressure pills but whatever pills that you have do it the natural way do it the organic way you get hooked onto one pill you're going to come back a month later to the doctor and you're going to be on three pills up until the point where you, you know you may be taking a half a dozen dozen pills and you're going to have a million symptoms just do it naturally what about the uh, the question of being chipped uh, this was recently asked on prophecynewswatch.com. The use of microchip implants has been a focal point for many science fiction movies and books over the past few decades, where it is used to be all stuff of science fiction in Hollywood. Now this technology has become a reality for humans. We already know about the Wisconsin-based company, Three Square Market, that announced that it was planning to surgically implant up to 50 employee uh, volunteers with this small microchip in the hand so the question is theoretically asked would you take this chip and i, I recall uh engaging with one person on the traditional catholic page on facebook uh just saying right now it's impractical for me to leave my job well at a certain point you're going to have to leave your job that's my whole point you know at what point do you draw the line i mean in order to be a part of the new world order system you know, the not only the economic system, but just the healthcare system, just to have a job, just to be in the school system, you're going to have to have the mark. That's the whole point is that you need to prepare and get off grid now because I know it's not impractical now, but it's always going to be impractical. So at what point do you say, well, now I need to, you know, now I need to make a move or do, do does someone just cave in and say, well, I'll get the mark. This is the only way I'm going to eat and survive. And unfortunately, people who keep delaying that are going to be more prone into taking the mark. Trust me, pressure can do a lot of things. We all would like to think that we would stay faithful. We all have to pray for final uh, perseverance. Taxpayers now are actually paying for military service members' sex reassignment surgery. So that's lovely to note where some of your taxpayer money is going to the transgender uh, agenda. Um, Michael Snyder has a good article that I reposted on my timeline in relation to the forthcoming economic collapse. I highly encourage you all to read it. You can also get the X-22 report, which is a great channel for keeping you up to date on all the latest uh, economic news. Mainstream media is reporting new planet discovered that could sustain life. Remember we talked about the alien agenda? Well, here you go. You might want to get used to it. The name Ross 128b, the newly discovered exoplanet, is the second closest found in our solar system, only 11 uh, light years away, and it could support life. And announcements like this could uh, presuppose that there are other exoplanets out there that may have life on them as well. And again, they're trying to build up the propaganda for the new signs coming and the aliens are here they've always been here we just never listen to them and the crop circles are trying to talk to us and all this other nonsense that we know is strictly demonic how about uh what's going on recently with israel and iran a lot of ooh, a lot of people thinking that this false flag could happen relatively soon i have seen the propaganda where iran tax israel uh, and this basically sparks World War III. Uh, from, from the Fatima perspective, we are told to pay attention to the Ukraine-Russia border. But we do know that World War III ultimately has the division over Zionists uh, essentially against uh, Islam. And everyone kind of divided on the matter. That's why you're seeing you know, Russia and the United States divided over you know, the Syria issue. Um, and then also uh, Israel uh, to boot. A lot of fireball activity being seen just over the past 24 hours. Arizona, Ohio, Germany, Switzerland, Australia, France, all within just a 10-hour period, but all happening within the past 24 uh, hours. There's a radioactive cloud over Europe. Uh, targets Russia as chief suspect. Scientists across Europe have been puzzling about a phenomenon that seemed laden with mystery and a menace in somewhat uneven proportions. A concentration of radioactive pollution caused by nuclide uh, called ruthenium-106, uh, which apparently is hovering over Europe, which is having scientists to scratch their heads. Uh, Alaska, how about this? Urge to prepare for nuke attack. 
residents were actually told to have emergency food and water. So remember in the past year, a lot of European countries were, you know, their governmental leaders were telling their people to prepare because they thought Russia was going to attack pretty soon. Well, now we have Alaska saying that, and this is over the threat of uh, North Korea. So again, uh, you know, it's not just Guam, it's not just Hawaii, it's not just, uh, you know, the countries in Europe. Now Alaska now makes uh, the list. Uh, North Korea and their latest propaganda, mapping out specific plan for a devastating EMP attack. And I have no doubt that there will be an EMP attack upon our grid. My goodness, could you imagine Americans living uh, in this society without their gadgets and gadgets. And it's actually one argument that I have never used in my escort ministry, which I'm going to use going forward because a lot of them rely so heavily on technology to get across their ads and move from country to country and this or that. And they're not going to be able to do that. Of course, after the martial law is declared, you're not going to be able to just jump in a plane and go from, you know, LA to San Francisco or whatever. But what happens when your whole social media collapses and you can't talk to anyone on your gadgets and gadgets? How are people going to get to you, so to speak? And again, a lot of these uh, girls, you know, they're making ten, twenty thousand dollars a day, and it's big business money to them. And uh, I, I tell them, you know, you're going to be suicidal after this collapse. And uh, this is just an argument that I've never presented before that just kind of came to me. Is, you know, when the whole grid goes down, uh, much like that show Revolution, uh, which was a, a mainstream movie, I think, or mainstream television series on like NBC. Something like that similar will happen. We'll blame it on the terrorists, this or that, and everyone needs to probably get on a certain grid, you know, a, a certain computer avenue, if you will. I don't know how to explain that scientifically, but it'll just further get people into the one world order system after something like that occurs. And my goodness, um, we've been talking about it so much now, and I'm speaking from the U.S. perspective, that it, it truly only remains... Uh, just a matter of time. What I'd like to do is uh, finish up with a couple supplemental supplemental stories from strangesounds.org. Um, more loud booms, as I have mentioned, not only in Alabama, but all throughout the United States. We've got millions of black snails invading a beach in St. Petersburg, Florida, which has uh, scientists scratching uh, their head. In addition to the flooding, that which we already talked about, uh, previously, there's five other countries that are experiencing severe floods. Well, four others outside of Greece, I should rephrase that. Libya, Honduras, Uganda, and Malaysia uh, are turning into water world. Some very compelling footage and video being seen there. We've got a rare and unusual 5.4 earthquake striking South Korea. Uh, a lot of heavy damage, a lot injured, uh, no radioactive uh, material matters found as of yet because some are trying to uh, potentially link this to some type of uh, technology that perhaps uh, North Korea may be using. Uh, mystery booms outside of the Alabama area. We have Idaho, Texas, Maryland, South Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, New York, California, and New Jersey making the list within the past uh, week and they're reporting these mysterious booms and officials on the governmental level are only coming up with BS explanations whether they're from the government whether they're incoming um, meteorites which seems most plausible uh, there's you know at a certain point you know the government's not going to be able to hide this <laughs> type of news anymore um, certainly you're not going to see it on the mainstream news uh, as of yet, uh, as of yet but I'm sure in the not so distant uh, future you will. Now, in Bali, uh, Bali was engulfed by furious flash flooding in which 135 millimeters of rain fell in just 12 hours. Again, people are swimming in boats and rafts just trying to get from uh, place to place in most, uh, well, I don't want to say most of the world, but in a, in a good portion of the world that America is just not privy to because they, they spend their time watching Fox News or this or that, and they're not going to get these types of stories um, we're seeing all kinds of anomalous, spectacular sun phenomena in the sky in Chile and in other Latin America countries. StrangeSounds.org is reporting upon huge swarms of jellyfish invading Crimea. Um, a lot of oceans uh, receding once again. 
Uh, there's coastal erosion in the Pacifica that is so dramatic uh, that not even the locals uh, can fathom uh, what they are seeing. Again, a lot of these uh, photos are just, you know, you sit there and you look at it and we're, we're, we're a distance from where these local communities are. But just imagine waking up one day and having some, you know, 100 foot monster sinkhole open up in your own community. That might shake you up a little bit. Uh, you know, it's, it's one thing when it doesn't hit your neck of the woods, but once something happens in your area, you start taking, uh, you know, messages like mine a lot more seriously. And we're beginning to see a lot more of these sinkholes. And, and if you're on the coastline, it's just a matter of time before it goes uh, underwater, according to most Planet X researchers. And I would be one of those. We had that massive 7.5 uh, earthquake in Iran. Uh, Iraq border this past week. I think the, the death toll is close to 500, if I'm not mistaken. Now another monster one in Costa Rica, 6.5. Um, again, the one to pay attention to here in the United States is what's happening now on the West Coast with the, the swarms of earthquakes, although not large in number, meaning in terms of, of the Richter scale, they're, they're more in the 3.0 range. When you start seeing a half a dozen to a dozen of them daily, that's not a good sign. That's typically preemptive of some type of more massive quake to come, as like what happened in Mexico. Um, there were a lot of swarms, smaller swarms, before the more massive quake hit. And then after that, there was like two to 300 5.0 uh, earthquakes aftershocks they had tsunamis i mean it's just totally devastated them I and that's what's eventually going to happen uh to the west coast and so we have to continue to to pray for those people and again i encourage you all to get to sot.net signs of the times for all the latest earth changes news as well fire in the sky news all types of uh, weird anomalies and uh weather anomalies anomalies with the sun so much good material out there for you folks that so many miss and I just try to give you the, the best of the best or the highlights uh, of the day, if you will. And uh, we'll continue to do so here at Tradcat Night. Now, we recently posted today, holistic doctors dropping dead like flies. Now, 77 dead. Is this all just a big conspiracy? Is there something else behind it? And in conjunction with that, we recently have the FDA approving of its first digital drug with its own tracking system. So now we've got kind of the marriage between Big Pharma and the 666 system, the microchip, uh, the counterfeit baptism, if you will, that everyone will have to take in order to get into the 666 club of the Antichrist, who, again, everything everything that we, we put forth here at Tradcat Night on the practical level comes together at a certain point. It's much more than just the theological point because everyone is going to be affected. You, your families, everything. If you're in the system now, if you've got kids in the public education system now, if you're taking them to the, you know, the quote unquote mainstream doctor now, uh, you know, at your local work or whatever, eventually you're going to have to be chipped. You're going to have to get vaccines once this great epidemic comes. You're not going to allow you to come to work. And so you got to get off the grid now. Like if you don't if you don't know how to transition from this period that we are here now into the the post apocalyptic uh, Planet X world, then you're not going to make it. Um, of course, God can get anyone through whatever He wants to, but I'm saying if you're if you know and are aware of these things, you should be taking measures right now to. Do, to be doing something about it, especially if you have families, because it's going to be more hard on families, especially large families, than those who are just, you know, living, uh, you know, the single life. I mean, you've got other people to think about. You know, where's my husband work? Where do my children go to school? I mean, so you got to start doing these things now. I wouldn't start putting it off and just saying, well, it's impractical now. You know, I'll think about it a year from now or something. Like, at a certain point, you, you better be off the grid. You, you better not be on a coastline. You better not be in a major city. Or you're just going to have to deal with the situation as, as it arises. And I know there's a good number of traditionalists who just argue that. Well, I'll, just, I'll go down with the ship here. Okay, well, don't say you weren't forewarned. Um, some news. Jim Caviezel, who starred in The Passion of the Christ, is going to be appearing in an upcoming biblical film, Paul the Apostle of Christ video. And it seems... Uh, upon early observation, it looks like a Protestant production, and he's going to be pay, playing Luke, and James Faulkner will be playing Paul. 
So Affirm Films is going to release an exclusive first look uh, teaser, ta uh, teaser trailer, which I put in the blog. It's going to be called, as I mentioned, Paul the Apostle of Christ. And uh, James Faulkner, apparently, I don't watch TV, uh, but you know, James Faulkner comes from the Game of Thrones. It's going to have some other relatively known uh, individuals, Oliver Martinez, um, and a few others to, to mention. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, I had some of you already commenting on social media thinking that this is not going to be a good film just by who's actually producing it. And I tend to agree with you, but let's see what happens as it comes out. From time to time, I put prepper news out there, try to get the latest from the prepping world out there so that you all can, for those who are of the same mindset, um, take action. And there's a great article uh, divulging 25 safe natural alternatives to the flu shot, so things that you can do on the natural level so that you don't have to get uh, the flu shot, which eventually will give you all these, will give you the flu to begin with, but then it'll give you all this other nasty stuff and, and or including paralysis and death in some severe cases. Um, so make sure you're checking into Tradcat Night Daily to check for that uh, latest news as well. And signs of the end news, just so much madness going on in our world. It's just mind boggling. France is actually now considering to lowering the legal age for sexual consent to 13. Uh, Justice Minister Nicole Bellaboot told Francis RTL Radio that age 13 was a limit that is worth considering. And also another madness news, migrant boys are now replacing girls as prostitutes in gender equal Sweden. So hey, we're not getting enough uh, of the girls in here. Let's start jumping into the sodomite agenda and we'll get some of these uh, multi-culturist uh, migrant boys into the game so to speak and while human trafficking is a big business certainly it ties in with the sex industry and it's just truly unfathomable to see these western european countries just falling by the day how about in the uk uh, school systems they have been hosting drag queen story times and this originally appeared on life site news so now we've got the transgenders and the drag queens like all teaching our youth. And uh, if your kid's in the public school system, I don't know why they are. Homeschooling is truly the only option available to a Christian believer at this point. Grade school terminating illegal lunchtime Bible study. This was reported upon by Fox News' is Todd Starnes, who does kind of similar stories. Thou shalt not study thy Bible, he says, at least not during lunchtime. That's what the new commandment at Huntsville Elementary School in Michigan has said. And this school district shut down a lunchtime Bible study for fifth graders. That was led by a teacher. So just more persecution news. You know, things for us to consider as we're heading down the road, there's more of the transhumanist element coming out from the New World Order. We've got researchers warning of a Skynet killer robots which will be easier to achieve than self-driving cars so they'll go around and kind of maintain the population much like that one oh i forget the name of that movie is someone can help me out in the comments section but it was basically you know the, the robots were basically policing the people i'm not talking about terminator there was another one oh, i forget the name of it but anyway uh these gadgets and gadgets uh ultimately will turn on humanity if you will and actually will be propagated by uh, the New World Order, to help keep us in, in line, so to speak. Um, there was a piece put out uh, by Meddling Catholics, uh, although a Novus Ordo website, it, it kind of provided a little sense of humor for these times in which EWTN's Raymond Arroyo, Arroyo interviews, uh, quote-unquote, Pope Francis, kind of like a little break in the action from uh, usual tone here at Tradcat Night to provide a little bit of a sense of a humor. Um, but it just goes to show you the modernist mindset. I encourage you all to kind of just check that out. We also have Francis the Humble getting a new supercar Pope Mobile. Uh, apparently, uh, Francis may want to reread his own encyclical where he wrote, there is an urgent need to develop policies so that in the next few years the emission of carbon dioxide and other highly polluting gases can be drastically reduced. So this is not a great way to support your own encyclical by 
being hypocritical with the toxic emissions and pollution and noise that this new Pope mobile uh, will give off. Uh, the Vatican uh, to host euthanasia conference. Yeah, this was a piece by uh, Barnhart that I rebogged uh, today. You can check that out on the website. But again, we're shifting from the culture of life to the culture of death, global depopulation, Agenda 21. Um, folks, it's here. I don't know what else to tell you. We've got to continue to fight, though. How about the latest from ISIS? Group vowing Christmas, Christmas blood while depicting attack on Francis and the Vatican. A pro-ISIS media group today circulated a poster depicting a vehicle moving toward the Vatican with a cache of weapons, vowing Christmas blood. So, hey, listen, we've seen this before in the past, and nothing has transpired, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen again. So it was newsworthy to kind of put out there. Maybe there will be a false flag you know, on the Vatican over the next few months. We will see. I mean, Rome ultimately is going to succumb to God's justice, whether it's through ISIS or not. Uh, but something for us to uh, at least be uh, aware of. Then we have some other predictive programming news, a new video put out which is suggesting that a mega false flag may indeed happen in London quite soon and perhaps even in multiple cities. And this is what they do. They put their agendas out in the movies and newsprint and TV shows and comic books and all that stuff before the events actually happen and one such researcher say the Zionists are probably going to destroy Big Ben, Big ben pretty soon maybe even the Houses of Parliament and so he goes into a 20 minute video in which you can find it right on the Trad Cat Night website and uh, read it for yourself or watch it for yourself so you can see visually how they're representing things and how things uh, may may go and again this is supplemental news it's not something to fear over if you're not into that kind of stuff then simply bypass it but once something does happen then we can kind of look in hindsight kind of play monday morning quarterback and go back and say okay well it was already in you know a, you know certain videos or this or that we have um an article entitled prepping for war army lifting ban on the mentally ill and drug and drug abusers to meet recruiting goals and this is kind of uh, a little interesting considering that most of our military is moving abroad and the new world order plan for those who are new is essentially to move all of our forces uh, out of the united states which would make an eventual takeover of this country or invasion uh, quite easy especially if the population is uh, not armed and so that is why the gun control propaganda needs to be propagated that's why they need the false flags right they need to have all these false flags so they can get more guns out of the city and then ultimately when the time comes a foreign entity will come a foreign power will come over and, and take over our country and it'll be quite easy to send people to fema camps and again it all ties together as crazy as you as you think it sounds on the on the surface level just wait till more and more of this stuff starts happening wait till you start to see tanks and uh, all kinds of uh, infantry rolling up in, in your neck of the woods, and then maybe we'll start taking it a little bit more seriously. <clears throat> How about One World Religion Watch News? An ecumenical Thanksgiving prayer service is going to be held in Mooresville. Oh, goodness. Uh, and I just simply said, lots of turkeys will be gathering this day, a.k.a. heretics, but everyone is invited to the ninth annual Mooresville Community Ecumenical thanksgiving prayer service 7 p.m Nove november 16th was just a few hours away my goodness better hurry up and finish this so we can rush out and commune with the heretics now this annual thanksgiving service is an opportunity for everyone they say to come together and show our unity and commitment into serving offerings will bless the christian mission now what does the church teach about praying with heretics and communing with other heretics it's under the pain of excommunication. You cannot do that. You are gravely offending Jesus if you do so. And again, we know what all is entailed with mortal sin. The, 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 the problem is, is these Novus Ordites don't think that they're sinning. That's what's frightening. When you don't think you're sinning and yet you actually are sinning, objectively speaking, this pertains to pride and self-love. 
Liberal Irish Church in Deep Troubles, Gloria TV reporting. Depression is very common amongst Irish priests, according to a summary presented at a meeting of the Modernist Association of Catholic Priests in Athlone, Ireland. Concerns were also expressed about the number of priests committing suicide. The Irish Church has gone very liberal, and they're having a lot of troubles just like everywhere else. It's not just in Ireland, folks, but you got to continue to pray for your priest, whether they're following Vatican II or not. There will be priests right now who are in the traditionalist movement who might abandon the faith altogether. You may have a priest who's following Vatican II finally wake up and say, yes, I know and understand. I can't follow this anymore. You know, I, I'm now leaving the Novus Ordo uh, religion and want to get and follow the traditional teachings of the church. You don't know how this is going to spin, so that's why you have to continue to, to pray daily for priests. It's not just, uh, you know, we, pr we pray for the priest at, at Sunday at Mass. Um, Cardinal Zen is uh, reporting a huge disaster is approaching for the church. It seems like Francis is trying to move the church further uh, underground, if that's even possible, over there in communist China. And uh, Zen has been working at this now for a while. We've seen several of his articles pop up um, throughout traditionalist sites. But, folks, I'm just going to label this and say the obvious. I'm pretty sure that we're already in a huge disaster since Vatican II and the poor people and communist china who are already part of the the underground church are really reaping the benefits of vatican too you can say oh goodness orwellian newspeak british bishops abolish the term father and mother a british government education watchdog ordered the holy ghost catholic primary school in london to remove mother and father from their admission form in order to please separated step and gay parents now the bishop's catholic education service known for accommodating to gay ideology is now drafting a new form for its 2200 plus schools the form will only refer to the family so we're seeing this new orwellian uh orwellian newspeak coming to light to suit uh the man of lawlessness principles and my folks my good friends i'm about out of breath and we're about to, at the two-hour mark. So I appreciate you all tuning in tonight. Make sure your friends, family, and church members are aware of these radio shows. Make sure you are getting proactive and you are participating. I want to hear from you all in the comment section uh, on the website. Let's meet there. Let's talk daily. I've got 15-plus articles going up. And, uh, Again, as things get worse and worse in the church, it will be a place for us all to kind of get together and and see what we're seeing and to where other people can feel like they're a part of something, if you will. Because I know maybe in your area there's not a whole lot of people who think like you. Well, you can log into the comments section and now start getting with uh, other like-minded Catholics who are seeing it just as clearly as you are and uh, can engage in conversation there. So I hope you all do uh, take advantage of that. And again... Cash donations still uh, being received for Trad Cat Night, this apostolate. Send, send me your inquiry to Apostle of Mary at hotmail.com. And I ask you all to continue to keep me in prayer. Continue to keep your wings spread as an eagle in faith and hope. Let's pray for us all to persevere unto the very end. Let us not fall into despair and doubt. And uh, my good friends, until next time, Ave Maria. <laughs>